So in a bit of an overview of the assessment for your year 11 and year, yes, sorry, year 11. So IA1, IA2 are probably complete um, with where you're at at the moment. And depending on where you're at, you could have already completed IA3. Maybe you're about to start it. Um, and then the analytical essay could be either um, next next term in term three, or it could be in term four, depending on how your school works. So today we're going to have a look at some writing foundations, um, some things about how to make your your um, writing flow, and then we'll finish off with some tips and advice. So to start with analytical writing, so this is a really important part of year 11 in terms of the, the final piece of assessment that you'll have and also year 12 where it all comes down to that analytical essay that you'll be doing in your external exam. So what is the purpose of analytical writing? Um, it's all about using evidence to derive meaning. So getting meaning from the evidence um, and then using that to support um, some kind of argument. So you'll be taking quotes and examples from a text and analyzing them to find out how audiences are positioned to feel or think or react. So it's usually got a pretty rigid structure, analytical writing. You have an introduction, a body, and a conclusion. Um, and your body consists usually of three paragraphs with your three points that support that thesis that you'll have woven throughout. So it uses formal language, tone, and style. And in the case of analytical, of the analytical you'll be writing, um, the aim will be to use your analysis to prove um, an argument. And you may be wondering what, what argument is it? So it's all about the prompt or the question that you're given. You may be given a statement and asked um, to what extent do you agree with this? Or you may just be told to analyze this particular thing. So uh, there's a few ways that you could be posed um, a question or a prompt, um, but Ultimately, you're just taking a position on that and you're supporting that position throughout with evidence and analysis. So where you'll find it, it's spread throughout the next two years um, and it mostly is going to be an essay uh, where you've given a question and you're required to answer it using the key evidence from a text that you've been studying. So often we see texts like Macbeth and Hamlet and things like that um, from Shakespeare. And you can also find a, a list of texts, I believe, on the QCAA website as well. So you can see what, what possibilities there are out there in terms of the, the texts that you could be given at school. Um, and as I mentioned, the analytical essay will be that final English assessment. So what are the basic ingredients for analytical pieces? So we've got a thesis, so also known as that position or the argument, um, and that will act as the answer to your question or the task that you've been given. So you may be asked um, to what extent do you agree with uh, the idea that Lady Macbeth is evil? Um, so you could then have your thesis saying arguably Lady Macbeth is, um, is an evil character. That's just a really simple example but um, that's the crux of it. It is stating exactly what you believe for, for that particular prompt, um, but doing so in third person, of course. You won't be using I in an essay because it does have that formal tone. Then, of course, you've got your evidence. 
So that can come in the form of quotes, um, structural devices used by an author, aesthetic features. Uh, it can pretty much be anything. Um, usually it is quotes. Um, but basically it just needs to support your argument. Then your analysis of that evidence. So there's no point having um, just evidence without actual analysis because it's great that you can show that you've memorized quotes and you can put them in and hopefully they're relevant, but you need to actually dig deeper into that to explore the meaning of the evidence because that then allows you to explain and support to show why your argument, your overall thesis is correct. So unpacking the analysis, the unpack and analyze the evidence to work towards arguing your position. So oftentimes we introduce um, a piece of evidence and then the very next sentence starts with this. You would be saying this and then using a analytical verb. So uh, examples of analytical verbs are like illustrates, communicates, um, suggests, indicates. Um, the, the simplest example that you can think of is probably shows. So you would be saying this suggests that and you would then unpack what the evidence actually gives. How does it support your thesis? And then sometimes audience positioning is also relevant depending on the task that you've been given. Um, so how does each of the elements position the audience to think, feel, or react? So with all of that in mind, we have a bit of a formula that you can use here. So what is the evidence? So what is what does that evidence mean, which is the analysis part? So how is how does it position audiences? And so now is linking back to the thesis. So in terms of the structure of your body paragraphs, you should have a topic sentence. Then you should be giving some context to introduce a quote. Um, then you should have the quote. Then you should have analysis. Then you would repeat that. So context, quote, analysis, context, quote, analysis. That could repeat two or three times. So you'll have two or three lots of it. Um, depending on how much evidence you have. And then at the end, you would have a concluding and linking sentence. Um, it could be two separate sentences or it could just be one, depending on um, your specific topic and how you're wording it. Um, when I say context, um, in terms of introducing the quote with context, um, one mistake that students often make is just the how they incorporate the quotes. So having um, just one full sentence as just a quote with none of their own words, just the start of the sentence, it's open quotation mark, end of the sentence, close quotation mark. Um, you're not introducing it at all. So don't, don't make that mistake. Um, introduce it somehow. So the simplest example of that is just um, character X says and then open quotation marks. Um, aim to always introduce it in some way. Um, and when you introduce it, you can provide that context. So who is saying it? When is it being said? Who are they talking to? Um, what, what are the different things that that you might need to specify to not only show that you really understand it, but also to make it clearer for the reader. Okay, so making your essay flow. This is one of the things that we'll be speaking a lot about today. So refer back to your thesis constantly. Use the same words or synonyms of those words. Um, to make it a really clear connection. Um, you can make it explicit or implicit with the way that you refer back to your thesis, 
but um, referring back to it is a must in some form because um, it's the spine of the essay. It's what you're proving throughout. So if it's not, if what you're writing is not closely linked to that, then you might be completely off topic. So link your paragraphs using the topic sentences, like I mentioned before. And topic sentences should be clear markers of what your paragraph is about and how your argument is being built. So some students use um, just general background information for a topic sentence. So maybe the year that it was published, if it was a book, or the author, or the time period um, of, of something. But your, your topic sentences for your body paragraphs should always, um, should always be about the paragraph itself and introducing that paragraph so it's clear what point you will be making within that. Um, check that your ideas make sense in the orders in the order that you have them in. So it's all very well saying that we need to make sure our paragraphs link, but it's very hard to do that if you've chosen um, a, an, illog an illogical order to actually have your points in. So there's lots of different ways that you can approach um, ordering your paragraphs. Um, I'll just provide one example, which is just doing a chronological order. So if I go back to my example with, uh, with Macbeth, so if you've got the essay question about whether Lady Macbeth is evil, um, at the start of Macbeth, the play by Shakespeare, um, Lady Macbeth is involved in plotting the regicide of King Duncan. So that just means the murder. Um, so that could be your first paragraph. Um, your second paragraph could be her involvement in the actual execution of that plan, um, actually going through with killing him. And the third paragraph could be about the end of the play where her mental health has deteriorated because of the toll that her actions have taken um, because of that evil side that she showed at the start of the play. So having that chronological order is a possibility um, and there's other ways that you can approach it as well. Some other tips as well, annotating your text really well. So highlight important quotes, mark characters and themes, and do basic analysis. And depending on what kind of format you've got. So you may have um, you may have a physical copy from your school library, in which case annotating would be a little bit tricky. But I recommend having a bit of um, a Google and see if you can find a digital copy. Often you will be able to find a downloadable PDF version of many of the texts that you may study in English. And so if you find that digital copy, then you can um, do whatever you like in terms of annotations. If you do have a print copy that you are allowed to write on, then definitely do that as well. You can also use things just like sticky notes and stuff like that. So you're not actually um, damaging the, the book in any way, um, but you're still doing that process of, of annotation. Practice analysing key quotes in depth. So your analysis should be beyond just the obvious. Um, lots of people have um, may have a good quote, but their analysis is essentially just um, slightly changing the words of the quote, sort of just putting it in their own words and, and saying... Um, so maybe the maybe the quote is about um, if it's about Lady Macbeth planning the murder or something. Um, your analysis 
could be uh, something really simple um, and not very sophisticated, like uh, this shows that Lady Macbeth was a bad person. Um, you want more in-depth than that. Um, show your understanding of of the context and of um, of the text itself. So you could be looking at explaining how um, maybe you could talk about how she was similar, she was presented as being similar to one of the witches in the story. Um, back then, witches were were seen in a in a really bad kind of way in that Elizabethan era. Um, women who didn't conform to um, that kind of uh, that kind of general picture of the way they saw women um, back then, then they were considered evil um, and wicked. So being able to show your understanding of the time, um, the fact that she was she had lots of masculine qualities was seen as um, an indicator that she was evil. Showing that you know those things is is a lot better than just stating the obvious that um, oh she she wanted to kill someone and therefore she was bad. So thinking about that that level of depth that you need to show your understanding. Then, of course, something that I'm sure you've heard um, for for all your English years so far, um, but I can't emphasize the importance of this enough, is planning before you write. So you will, in your external exam, have dedicated planning time. So learning how to actually use that time effectively is really important. Um, getting your thoughts down, coming up with a structure, um, all those sorts of things to then make sure that when you actually go to write it, you have a clear idea about how you're going to achieve all of those things that we've already spoken about with flow, with the thesis linking back, um, those sorts of things, the, the order of your paragraphs, um, all, all of those considerations. So here's a bit of an example of how you can apply that formula that um, that we have spoken about already. So you can have a read of this in a little bit more detail to see how they have applied this um, this formula. But a few things that I want to point out in particular, um, you can see in the second sentence how they introduce that quote. So I was saying about how students often stumble when it comes to introducing quotes. So in this case, we've got that context that I was saying. Uh, when confronted with the vulnerable Claudius in prayer, Hamlet evades the deed of killing him. So it's giving some context around what's actually happened and who's involved. Uh, in this case, we've got a colon to introduce the quote that then follows. And the other option, aside from a colon, is um, if you were to word it with um, this person says this, then you you could do that with uh, without a colon, um, all just one sentence. Um, so Hamlet evades the deed of killing him, um, stating up sword, etc. Um, so always just avoid having quotes as sentences by themselves. Try to introduce them in a way that makes it clearer for the reader and shows your knowledge of the context. Um, and you can see here that you're also analyzing what it means. So this mirrors the sordid diction of Claudius's own confession and communicates to audiences that Hamlet is aware of the corruption, but would rather sheathe his sword and allow horrid deeds to continue to satisfy his own parameters for revenge. So it's not in this particular example, but 
in um, in lots of essays, um, a good way of approaching it is that when you so you've got your your context, your quote, and then when you go to do your analysis, you would have the word this in that sentence. So um, as soon as you've got your your quote in there, you then say this something. You then use your analytical verbs like suggests and implies. So you would be saying this suggests that. And then you would analyze what it actually means, how it supports your thesis. So have a look at that in a little bit more detail and see how we follow the formula in that paragraph. Public audience writing um, is another aspect of, um, of senior English, and it will be the first um, piece of assessment that you'll do for Unit 3, which is the start of Year 12. You could be doing that at the end of Year 11 or the start of Year 12, depending on how your school structures things. Um, so the purpose of that um, Public audience writing is the style that's probably the most unfamiliar to you, um, and its purpose is to combine elements of those other genres, so the creative, persuasive, and analytical styles, to create a piece that's more appetizing to the public audience. So we don't usually go out and just read essays or persuasive speeches for enjoyment, but we do go out and read articles in um, on on the online platforms and in the news newspapers and stuff so and columns and um, blogs that that kind of thing so it could be described as more journalistic um, by your teachers so key features of this it's similar to analytical writing in terms of structure because you do have an introduction, um, your body paragraphs and concluding paragraphs. Um, and it will have the persuasive and creative elements um, arguing that kind of position. Um, however, it uses more of an informal or casual tone. And you also have media as well, media being pictures or or videos or things like that to, to make it more like an, a news story um, or a blog that you would see online. So um, what we often stumble over with this type of writing is we we make it too formal, um, whereas it should be it should be more digestible and more enjoyable to read. So where you will find it, as I said, you've got one in year twelve, and it's likely that you've probably already done one in year eleven as a bit of a a practice for what's to come. Okay, so a little bit more about how to ace public audience writing. So structure. So just like with your traditional analytical essays, You've got the basic introduction, body, and conclusion. Um, you introduce your concepts, your texts, and your thesis at the start. Um, so usually you would be starting off with what are you actually talking about? Your first sentence in an analytical essay and in this kind of writing is usually um, what, what text are you looking at, who's the author, maybe what the time period is. Um, in this public audience writing, it could be the second sentence that does that. The first sentence could be a little bit more of a hook because it does have that more casual style. Um, so, so thinking about how, how to make it engaging is something that's important. Your body sections will have your evidence, um, your argument, and your link to the 21st century. So often you'll be looking at, um, for example, in year 12, I looked at um, a study in Scarlet and a study in Pink. So those are Sherlock Holmes um, texts. So one was the original 
book and one was an episode from the TV series that was an adaptation of the original book um, or the original books. So um, linking to the 21st century is, is often what you'll have to do when you've got that case of, of something that was written a long time ago. Conclusion, of course, um, re reiterating ideas and not introducing new ones. Don't make the mistake of introducing whole new ideas at the end um, because the conclusion is about wrapping up what you've already said. Your aim is going to be the same um, in as it is in analytical writing. If you want to argue your point, um, but the means that you accomplish it is different. So as I said, the it's about the tone that you you take. You want it more conversational than formal. Um, we might describe our Western culture today as enlightened and progressive. Are we really better than the history that has always chained women to convention? Asking questions like that that are um, that are more sort of conversational, um, more sort of engaging rather than sort of stating facts and being really just analytical um, in a formal kind of way. So showing like our closeness to the audience as well. Like, are we really better um, using the words we? So um, first person as well. Often when we, we see articles online it's it's first person so that's a way that's different to the third person that we see in essays and and things like that and that's another example as well that's a good one in red for you to have a look at I did mention um media so you can have pictures and things that support your um your story or your article so for my one in year 12 I had to write um like a blog kind of post so I had to find images from um from the movie or from the tv episode that was the adaptation of the book to show different camera angles and and different things that I was analyzing um so those are things to to consider um you get to experiment with persuasive techniques um you can use bolding and and italicizing and all those different sort of extra things that you can see in in like an online kind of blog or article style. So a bit different to just writing a, a full essay on lined paper in, a, in exam conditions. Um, and this is another example of formality here. Um, like as if family dinners needed to be any more awkward. Um, so you're still being analytical. So the emotional manipulation brings the truth into sharp focus. Their romance isn't built on love, um, but Tony's primal need to be cold. Um, as long as he's secure in himself, never mind what she wants, right? So that those sort of questions, um, those sort of acknowledgements of like if family dinners really needed to be any more awkward, that's a far more casual and conversational style than you would take in an essay. <laughs> 